Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the emulation performance of the all new Google Pixel 5. Now to tell you the truth, I've been wanting to test this CPU that's in the new Pixel 5 for a long time on my channel. I kind of held off on it. I've done tests with the 720, the 730, the 730G, and now we have the 765G that comes in the Pixel 5 here on the channel. And we're going to see how it performs with some of our favorite emulators. Now, when it comes to emulation on the phone, personally, I don't like touch controls, so I'm going to be using a physical controller. And my go-to for a phone like this would be a USB Type-C controller. And one of the best ones on the market right now is the Razer Kishi. But when it comes down to it, if you do want to spend a little less money, you can pick up a Bluetooth controller or you can use a pre-existing controller that you might already own, the Xbox One controller. We do have Bluetooth built into this device, so we can connect basically any controller as long as it's compatible with Android. Before we jump right into some emulation testing, I just wanted to go over the basic specs here. I can do a full review on this device, so if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below. For the CPU, we have the Snapdragon 765G. Definitely not as powerful as the 855 or the 865, but it should get us by with everyday tasks, and hopefully does a good job with emulation. The GPU is the Arduino 620, we have 8 gigs of RAM, and the display is a 6 inch 90 hz OLED at 1080 by 2340. So for this video, we're going to be testing out some Dreamcast, PSP, 3DS. We'll also do some GameCube and Wii. Unfortunately, the Daemon PS2 emulator from the App Store just crashes when I try to start it here. So we definitely need to wait for an update on that one. And as for the lower end stuff, if you want to do anything from NES up to N64, it's going to run perfectly fine on this device, even upscaled. So first up, we have some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator, and I'm upscaled to 1920 by 1440. Looks absolutely amazing. The FPS is listed in the top right hand corner with each one of these games. I will have the box art on screen, the name of the system, the name of the emulator, and if I'm upscaled or not. Plus, I'll have the FPS listed on the phone screen. It'll look a little different for each emulator, but overall, it'll give us a good idea of how well these games are running. Basically, for a Dreamcast, if the game's compatible with the ReDream emulator, you're going to be able to run it here, even upscale to 1920 by 1440 and some of the easier to run games, like what you see on screen right now, will be able to go up even higher. But given the screen resolution of the Pixel 5, it won't make much of a difference, so I'd say 1920 by 1440 is perfect. Next up, we have PSP using PPSSPP with each one of the games you're going to see here. I'm at 3x resolution using the Vulcan back end, and it runs great on this device. The Snapdragon 765G is actually handling a lot of this stuff way better than I thought it would. And even went through and tested one of the harder ones, you'll see it in just a second, but that's Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition. Test it out on your lower end device and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But here, runs at full speed, even at 3x with no hacks on.
So when it comes to 3DS using the Citra emulator, it's always really hit or miss for me, and most of the time it comes down to the audio. I've turned off audio stretching in the settings, I turn it back on just to see if I could get a little better audio out of it without all the skipping, but for the most part, even on higher end chips, I'm still having these issues that you're going to see in this video. And it really comes down to that audio just skipping around a lot. But overall, at 1x resolution, the Pixel 5 is actually doing a pretty decent job with this emulator. And keep in mind, more development is going into this emulator for Android, and it's only going to get better over time. And as you can see here, Mario Kart 7 is definitely playable with this emulator on the Snapdragon 765G. Taking it up a bit to GameCube with the Dolphin emulator, I actually tested some GameCube and Wii, you'll see it in this video. We're using the Vulcan back end, and when it comes down to it, I'm pretty impressed with the performance here. Now this doesn't mean that every single game is going to run at full speed, but there are a lot of GameCube and Wii games that will run at full speed on the Pixel 5. We're going to move over to a harder one, which I actually expected not to run well at all, which is Automotalista, and for the most part, performance is great. You will see it dip down every once in a while, but I was actually expecting this to be running at about 40 FPS, and we're right there on the edge of a continuous 60. And, and I actually didn't even have to go back and test it with OpenGL, because Vulkan was working fairly well with most of the stuff that I tested, but like I mentioned, you won't be able to run every single game at full speed. And when it comes to a game like F-Zero GX, which is just really hard to emulate on an ARM device, we are getting a lot of slowdowns. And finally, at least for this video, we have some Wii, still using that Dolphin emulator with the Vulcan back end. We're at the native resolution, and this game did run at 30 FPS on the original GameCube hardware, so that's what we're at here. And I have to say, performance with these Wii games and the Dolphin emulator on the Pixel 5 is pretty amazing for this lower-end chipset. It's not a Snapdragon 855 or an 865 or an 865 Plus, but it's definitely holding its own. So in the end, I'm a big fan of this chipset. Now, as for the phone, we'll have to wait till my full review. I think they could have done some things a lot better here or just lowered the price way down. But when it comes to the Snapdragon 765G, it's doing a great job with emulation and regular native Android gaming. I'll have some of that in the next video also. And there are less expensive devices out there with the same chipset and bigger screens. I mean, something like the Motorola Edge is a bit cheaper. They go on sale all the time. Xiaomi makes a few phones with the 765G, so if you're looking for a mid-range chipset that can handle emulation like you saw in this video, I can highly recommend this chipset here. But that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see a full review on the Pixel 5 or you just want to see something else running on this chipset, let me know what it is in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.